Section 29. Blasting. Blasting. General. This section applies to blasting activities performed by the Department of the Army civilians or under DA contract with the use of commercial explosives on non-military lands and installations. For all other blasting activities, see section 01.G. Prerequisites, an explosives safety site plan approved by Department of Defense Explosives Safety Board in accordance with DA PAM 385-64 and DA PAM 385-65 is required prior to placement of explosives on site or the start of explosives related operations. Permission in writing shall be obtained from the government designated authority before explosive materials are brought onto the job site. Periodic replenishment of approved supplies does not require written approval. A blasting plan shall be developed by the contractor, submitted and accepted by the GDA prior to the placement of explosives on site or the start of any explosives related operations. As a minimum, it shall include the following. List the names, qualifications, and responsibilities of personnel involved with explosives. The contractor's requirements for handling, transportation, and storage of explosives, employee training programs and certifications, types of explosives, schedule of activities and loading procedures, detailed blasting schedule, explosives transportation route, safety signals methods and locations, danger area clearance, methods for securing the site, seismograph, vibration, and damage control, test shots, post-blast inspection and misfire procedures, provisions for disposal of explosives, blasting agents, unused and associated material, and post-blast ventilation requirements. Public relations requirements before and after blasting, for example, community communication, protection of structures, and personnel. All persons working with explosives shall be in good physical condition and be able to understand and give verbal and written orders. Warning signs shall be provided at points of access to the blasting area. Blasting operations near overhead power lines, communications lines, utility services, or other structures shall not be carried on until the operators and or owners have been notified and measures for safe control have been taken. All loading and firing shall be directed and supervised by one designated person. Electric detonators. Blasts using electric detonators shall be fired with an electric blasting machine or a properly designed power source. Blasting machines. Blasting machines shall be operated, maintained, tested, and inspected as prescribed by the manufacturer. Blasting machines shall be tested prior to use and periodically thereafter as prescribed by the manufacturer. Blasting machines shall be secured and accessible only to the blaster. Only the blaster shall connect the leading wire to the machine. Storage of explosives. The storage of explosives shall be in accordance with the requirements of the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms as outlined in 27 CFR 555 subpart K or the state in which they are stored. An accurate running inventory of all explosives and blasting agents stored at the project shall be maintained. Two copies shall be maintained, one at the magazine and one in a facility which is at least 50 feet from the magazine. Security of explosives. The area shall be guarded to control access to the explosives and ensure no tapping with explosives during non-working times. Explosive materials shall not be abandoned. Transportation of explosives. Transportation of explosive materials over public highways shall be in accordance with Department of Transportation requirements. Marine transportation of explosive materials 
shall be in accordance with U.S. Coast Guard requirements. Transportation of explosive materials by aircraft shall be in accordance with FAA requirements. Vehicles used for transportation of explosive materials shall not be loaded beyond their rated capacity and the explosive materials shall be secured to prevent shifting of load or dislodgement from the vehicle. When explosive materials are transported by a vehicle with an open body, a magazine or closed container shall be securely mounted on the bed to contain the cargo. Personnel. Vehicles for transportation of explosive materials shall be in charge of and operated by a person who is physically fit, careful, reliable, and able to read and understand safety instructions, and not under the influence of intoxicants or narcotics. Only the authorized driver and a properly trained helper shall be permitted to ride on any conveyance transporting explosive materials or detonators. Handling of explosives. There shall be no smoking, open flame lamps, or fire of any kind within 50 feet of any area where explosives are being handled. No source of ignition except necessary means to light fuses or fire electric detonators shall be permitted in an area containing loaded holes. Containers of explosive materials shall be opened only with non-sparking tools or instruments. Metal cutters may be used for opening fiberboard boxes, paper bags, or plastic tubes. Explosive materials shall be removed from the containers only as they are needed for immediate use. Drilling and loading. All drill holes shall be sufficiently large enough to freely allow for the insertion of the explosives. No person shall be allowed to deepen drill holes that have contained explosives or blasting agents. The cartridge shall be primed only in the number required for a single round of blasting. Wiring. In any blast using electric detonators, all blasting caps shall be from the same manufacturer. Bus wires shall be single solid wires of sufficient current carrying capacity. The insulation of all firing lines shall be adequate and in good condition. Firing. Firing. Prior to the firing of a shot, all persons in the danger area shall be warned of the blast and ordered to be a safe distance from the area. Blasts shall not be fired until it is certain that every person has retreated to a safe distance and no one remains in a dangerous location. Safety signals. All blasting operations shall use the following safety signals. Warning signal. A one minute series of long audible signals, five minutes prior to the blast signal. Blast signal. A series of short audible signals one minute prior to the shot and the all clear signal. A prolonged audible signal following the inspection of the blast area. The safety signals shall be given by use of a compressed air whistle, a horn, or equivalent means and shall be clearly audible at the most distant point in the blast area. The boat whistle on a drill boat shall not be used as a blasting signal. The code for safety signals and warning signs and flags shall be posted at all access points. Employees shall be made familiar with the signals and instructed accordingly.